Shalom, Shalom, Shabbat, Adonai. Welcome to the 6th Exodus program. I'd like to say thank you for listening to our program. We're excited about uh, what God is doing in these last days. This segment here is called Acetone in Israel. Also, uh, the subtitle, Two Kings, One Queen, and an Ace. I want to tell you about uh, these people that are called Etruscans. Etruscans were uh, an ancient civilization that was in uh, in 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 Italy, and before any of uh, white people arrived there, including what is called the Dinites, uh, there were they already had built buildings, roads coins and other uh, art and uh, they are called Etruscans. Etruscans was uh, in Italy from 800 BC until roughly 264 to 205 uh, BC. One thing that's very interesting that I noticed about the Etruscans are is that the Etruscan writings, their alphabets, are very similar to the in ancient Egyptian writings, their uh, alphabet. I want to tell you that um, that the reason why the Etruscan civilization was so advanced is because of some things that had happened previously. And I want to read this to you. It's uh, the book of Enoch, which is in chapter 6. And uh, there was advanced civilization because of these things which had happened. It says, And it came to pass, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days was born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from amongst the children of men, and beget us children. And Samjauza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you will not agree a deed to agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay a penalty for a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves to a mutual implication, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together, and bound themselves by mutual implications upon it, and they were in all about two hundred who descended in the day of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon, and they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual implications upon it, and these are the names of their leaders, Semiazaz, Akabel, Ramiel, Kokobel, Tamiel, Ramiel, Daniel, Ezeziel, Bartesiel, Arciel, Amoros, Batiel, Amiel, Zaquiel, Samsapiel, Saturel, Turel, Jamiel, Sorel. These are the chiefs of tens. Chapter 7 And all the others with them took unto them wives, and each chose for himself one. And they began to go into them, and defile themselves with them, and they taught them charms, enchantments, the cuttings of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And they begat, they became pregnant, and they bore great giants, whose height was three thousand ells, who consumed all the acquisitions of men, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured them mankind. And they began to sin against birds, beasts, and reptiles, and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusations against the lawless ones. 
And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and antimonies and the use of antimonies and the beautifying of the eyelids and all types of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godliness and they committed fornication. And they laid, they led them astray, and they became corrupt in all their ways. Some Joseph taught enchantments and the cutting of roots. Amaros taught the resolving of enchantments. Bartiel taught astrology. Cocobel, the constellation. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Arquiel, the science of the earth. Sapiel, the science of the sun. And Sariel, the course of the moon. And men perished, they cried, with a cry that went up to heaven. So as you can see, these are the knowledge of black people or let's just leave it like the Etruscans. This is the knowledge of the Etruscans and the Hebrews. Now these things was done in the Hebrews upon the Hebrews, this knowledge because Enoch was a Hebrew, but the Etruscans also seem to have this knowledge because in this time they was they, their culture flourished very much. And so when white people came to Italy from the islands that they was at, they uh they came and they they saw these people these black people flourishing, and when they was flourishing like they were, it was amazing. And they killed most of them and possessed their lands, and so you have no interest in, no interest in civilization today, no nothing only their artwork, no interest in people. So, um, I believe I believe this is personal. I believe that. Uh, the Romans pursued the Etruscans, and I think uh, because the Romans, they were such a, a warrior and warlike people, is that they want to kill all of their enemies, and they will pursue them until they are sure all of them are dead. And so, they the next group of people they saw similar to this type of uh, uh, artwork and uh, skills as far as craftsmanship and arms, and the uh, the beautifying of their women. It's um, the Hebrews. So when um, the John Hyrcanus came to it, came to to uh, to what we know as Israel. This is where uh, John Hyrcanus. His name is H Y C A N U S. When John Hyrcanus arrived in Israel, he saw people similar like the Etruscans. And uh, now John Hyrcanus, I don't know if he had a soldiers with him, but I know that he was uh, with these, uh, he was in the family that is called Hasmoan. Hasmoan is a, a royal family that was in Italy. And this royal family uh, had actually blossomed. And of course, they had many soldiers, like we have today in America, many races, and uh, many types of families, and many uh, different types of people in their, uh, in their army. And of course, the, uh, because the Etruscans are dead, uh, there rose many families to rise up and conquer the world. So. They had many soldiers that went out to conquer different parts of the world. So John Harkanius arrived in Israel with some soldiers, and they went to a place in south of Judea to learn the customs of their religion, of course by stealth. And they went south of Judea to a, a, a place that was called Edom. And Edom was the land of which is called the Edomites, which are the descendants of Esau. 
Esau, his, his name meant red because the soup that his brother made and he sold his birthrights, of course, to his brother. And his brother uh, cooked some red soup. And so, but later, the name of Edom was changed to Edomea, the land of the Edomean, which, of course, John Harkanus is in his people that are occupying at this time. And so John Harkanus was a grave robber of King David and King Solomon. He also, when he had killed all the the Edom, Edomites in the in place of Edom, he uh, he had the people, his people, to change his name of um, from uh, from Edom or uh, Edomites to Jewish. So the people, this is where their Jewish religion started with John Harkanyas. And John Harkanius made himself high priest. And uh, God did not call this man to be high priest there in Israel over his people. He did it by stealth and he did it by, by being um, a grave robber. And in fact, the, the coins, the, the gold and the silver that he had stolen from the, that he had looted from King David's uh tomb and King Solomon's tomb he made coins out of them and put his uh, put his in face on them now some people call this the spoils of war other people call this uh, a conquest it's a conquest of war and which of course is common and uh, of course uh, these did happen a lot in these days, many countries rose up against other countries. And so, we understand how these things work. So, when it's, uh, when the nation of Israel go back to Israel, or when you see a group of people, a group of people die, then you will know this is also a conquest of another country. But I tell you this, I will not call any more people liars anymore. This is also something that um, when the, the ancient Hebrews was in slavery in Babylon, the, um, they was accused of the ancient Hebrews bringing back the Babylonian Tulma to Israel. These are accusations brought on by the priests. That was uh, called uh, the Edomian. The Edomians is a name that the Greek people called uh, called the ancient uh, called the Edomites, because Edom they called it Edomia, and uh, the word Edomia is found several times in the Bible, referring to uh, the people who went in and conquered that territory south of uh, south of Judah. Uh, John Harkanius went into uh, went into uh, Edom about 849 BC, and his death was 842 BCE. After conquering the uh, the Ed Edomites, and later the country uh, that part of the country was called Edomians, which is south of Judea. Later on, they became these people became Jewish. Uh, you may also know them as Khazars, and also they are part of the Hasmonean family. That's mean the Roman family. These people are Roman, so this is more likely the tribe of Dan, because the Danites they are uh, Hasmonean. They had went in and uh, start worshiping. And gave their name Dan to the tribe of uh, the Danites, which is uh, worshiping the the idol Diana. Another thing that you need to know about this uh, that the Jewish people do not mess 
mention is a, a queen. Her name is Melissa Dean. Melissa Dean was born in France in 1089 A.D. And her, her death was 1143 A.D. And uh, her parents were the Counts of Aegean. And uh, her grandchildren was Elizabeth of Jerusalem. Her great father-in-law was Baldwin II, uh, the Falkland Kings. Also, during this time when uh, Melissa, the Queen of Jerusalem, uh, was set up by, again, the Hasmonean people of Rome to put her in as Queen of Jerusalem. She did not conquer Jerusalem. They had no king at that time in Jerusalem, and John Harkanius was dead at this time. He died in 1104 A.D. So, um, of course, uh, the Roman, the Roman government, not Roman government, yeah, I guess a Roman government, they had uh, uh, brought in this queen, Queen Melissa Dean. That's M-E-L-I-S-E-N-D-E. -E of Jerusalem. Now during this time also they had started uh, what is called the uh, the Crusades to uh, to suppress Turkish rule and Arab rule in the world because the Arabs became very powerful during this time. So to suppress the these uh, these things that was going on the Catholic Church rose up armies to suppress uh, they suppressed the tyranny of, uh, of Arabs that was uh, occupying and ruling the world at this time during uh, the Byzantine Empire and also the, the Ottoman Wars. Now, after the death of uh, Esmolissa Dean, Israel had no ruler for many years. They had no kings for many years. Now, the, uh, the Jewish people that had came in and uh, started living, or the army that had started living, Jewish people had not come in to live in Jerusalem at that time. Only a few soldiers was there, was living in South Israel. And the people, they had different teachers learning the language of Israel, living there at that time also. Now, the, the last king I want to talk to you about, his name is Hassan ben Ali. He is the Sharif of Mecca. He reigned as king in Israel from 1916 until 1924. He was the, also the Emir of Mecca. And he reigned in Judah from 1908 until 1924. His death was in 1931. He was a descendant of Muhammad. Now he, uh, Hassan bin Ali, he requested support from the British, British government, to help him to to suppress the the Turkish rule of the world. He wanted to gain more strength amongst the Arab nations and suppress the uh, Turkish rule in the world. And he asked Great Britain for their help. Of course, Great Britain did not help him at all. They pretended to by sending Lawrence of Arabia to him many times, trying to get him to sign documentations, uh, which is called the Belfort Declaration. But he refused to sign many times. And he never did sign the Belfort Declaration. Uh, Hasid bin Ali had uh, two sons, uh, Abdullah and Faisal. Uh, both of these uh, these uh, sons of his, they was able to raise up a very good, comfortable army to be able to fight against the Turks. So when they went to war against the Turks, Great Britain did not help. They was there, but they did not help. They was trying to protect their own interests by uh, the trade routes 
that they had in India and they wanted to get their hands on the oil that was in Iraq. And so they was trying to see, make sure that the, uh, the Arabs kill each other. The Arabs kill each other and the Arabs kill the Turks and vice versa. But the British did attack Jerusalem and they spied, they sent them off. Uh, Hassan bin Ali was Lawrence of Arabia. And when the, the British attacked Israel, uh, Jew, Jerusalem, that they attacked with planes. And the Germans and the British, they had filled the sky with airplanes, uh, air wings touching air wings, tails touching tails. And their leader, General, General Edgar Allenby, was their commanding general at this time. And after they had conquered Jerusalem, they wanted them to uh, sign the Belfort Declaration again. Uh, he did not sign. The Hassan bin Ali did not sign. The Sharif of Mecca did not sign the Belfort Declaration. But um, uh, a note was thrown out of the airplane and asked the, um, the Sharif of Mecca, the king of Jerusalem, Hassan bin Ali, to surrender. Now, the Turks nor any of the people that was uh, the Arabs had never seen airplanes before. So they surrender, of course, with no gunfire at all. Now, according to some writings, depend on who you're listening to, uh, General Allenby said he prayed that he would not have to bomb Jerusalem and that he wanted to protect the sites or the, the Holy Land or something to that effect. I don't know what that meant, but that's what is in uh, quite a few books that I've read that he didn't want to bomb that. Well, well anyway, he did surrender and not a shot was fired. And they were terrified. They had never seen airplanes before. So the note that was thrown down from the airplane had uh, General Allen B. name on it. And to the people there, when they read the note, of course, there's, these are not English-speaking people. They're Arab-speaking people. So they see the name Allenby. They see the name Allah. looks like Allah. And B looks like son in Arabic. looks like son. So they're thinking that this is a son of God. I mean, they've never seen airplanes before flying above their heads like that. So they think that it's something, this is something really, um, there's something great. So this is something that is really something. So the, um, after the, after General Allenby had conquered Jerusalem and its objectives was met, they, um, they, was able to knock the hole down. The German Kaiser made a hole in the wall for General Allenby to make a triumphant entry. And the triumphant infantry that he wanted to come into, he didn't ride his horse through there. He, uh, I don't know why they thought that they were someone was there to to honor him because they had ran all the black people out in 70 A.D. So there was no black people there to hail him as a king or anything like that. So I don't know why the Kaiser would put a hole in the wall that people would be there welcoming him with palm branches or anything like that. Because the black people, the Hebrews, was in the Ambu province in West Africa at this time. So... Um, the Lord, or uh, Lord Belfort, had written a declaration as a reward to claim Wiseman 
for his discovery of a raw material of explosive. The raw material that they found was called acetone. He had solved the problem as far as what, what the, the strange smelling chemical was in two weeks. And uh, they found out that it was, uh, it was acetone. And this is how the Jewish people became extremely rich. And also they found uh, they was hiding a lot of the acetone and chestnuts was a perfect source of making um, much raw alcohol for explosive. Edgar Allaby wired uh, England in December the 10th with their, uh, with their British and German air aircraft flying over uh, Jerusalem. And when they signed this uh, declaration, the Belfort Declaration, England gave the Palestinian land to the Khazarians, the Russians, and the, the British are still sick about this today because they didn't know that they had this raw material there in Israel. And they want, of course, to keep it for themselves. But, of course, the, the Jewish people who called themselves Jewish did not... Um, did not share with England what they had discovered there in uh, in Israel, but they uh, used the uh, the acetone to be able to sell a lot of war material, uh, dynamite, and other things that uh, that they uh, seem to sell to around the world. During World War One, taking Jerusalem on the twenty second day in the ninth month in nineteen eighteen. Klein Weissman was the future president of the Jewish state, uh, concluded a treaty with Prince Faisal of Arabia, which later became Iraq. At this time, the Russian Shizar was dead. For them, this was freedom. To the relief of the European Jewry, Germany, Austria, lost the war 20 years later. There was absolutely no Holocaust. There was no Jewish people there is no Jewish people. The Jewish people that was there in uh, in Judah, which is called uh, Edomian or was Edom, there was not enough Jewish people to claim in the Holocaust. In the original Hebrews or black people, they are still here in America. So there was no Holocaust at all. This was a big fabrication lie from the uh, well, people they call themselves Jewish now. In Paris in January 1919, it was the site of the World Peace Conference ending World War I. Sean Weissman represented the Zionists. His Royal Highness Emil Faisal representing the Arab Kingdom drafted an agreement in January the 3rd 1919 migrating Jewish to Palestine giving the land of Palestine to the Jewish people which called themselves uh, Jewry uh, Jewish Jewry David Ben-Gurion flew to England along with Wiseman petitioning Prime Minister Churchill to set aside provisions of 1939, the White Paper 
to a law one million Jews in Palestine. The International Zion Conference raised money from wealthy Jews in New York, according to news views. This is a the objective was for the transformation from Arab rule to Jewish Jewish rule. They say the land will transform the Arab rule, the Turkish Ottoman Wars. So on May 14, 1948, November the 29th, 1947, they gave birth to Israel, but they signed a document May the 14th, 1948, that Israel became a nation and a flag was raised in the United Nations. The Zionist leader, the Israel spokesman, who served as the president of the Zionist organization in his acetone production method, was of great importance to the British war during World War I. The stinky smell of acetone to the pundits is called dimethane keystone uh, dimethane ketone or acetone can be found in the later stages of diabetes where the link is distinctly sweet it counts among its, its off the faucets of solvents with strong polar access this the size of double bands and melting plastic it is found this with glamour girls and detail of wiping glasses and uh, from fingernail polish remover is the story of combat zone. It's also lesser known as ground powder, as gunpowder. Hell sway much of the brigadier's dismay batteries was often smashed due to their own muzzle flash. Its source of course, is a gun position lured a gang to this target. They put acetone inside of bullets, inside of rounds. So the tracer, the tracer rounds or the tracer bullets, when they are fired, you can see them. But to sell these bullets to World War One people, they uh, they also said you, know, you can trace these rounds where you fire firing. But also the enemy could see where they was firing from. So they sold both of these ideas to both other sides of the army because they were selling, the Jewish people were selling to both both sides, to the Americans and to the British, to the Germans. They were selling these this acetone and they was making a killing money off all these wars. Every war they would they would start, they wanted to start war so they could be able to sell this acetone to the governments. Now these acetone that they were selling, they made uh, flares. They made a, it was a new twist to dynamite. And of course they put just a trace around because the, the muzzle, the muzzle flash, once a bullet, a gun is fired through a muzzle, the muzzle flash, that's the tip of the uh, of a weapon. There's a muzzle. It will flash, and of course, there's a, a stinky smell that's on this. It's acetone, so they put acetone inside the bullets, so they, you can see the muzzle flash. And of course, if it's a, it's and then the tip of them, they put also so that you can see the trace around where it's being fired at, or the direction of the weapon where it's being fired. So it's very beautiful at nighttime. We see tracer rounds fired at nighttime. You can trace them. Wiseman became very rich by selling this product and other products that you may not know anything about. But Wiseman became extremely rich. Jewish people became extremely rich selling this product, acetone. Since providing background, information for Lord Belfort declaration by which the Jews ex was expelled in Rome 
regained a metal eastern home. When Acetone, in part, freed them, Wiseman came at last to lease them. Within a month, he had cre created synthetic acetone. Didn't need any acetone from Israel now, because Weizmann figured out how to make synthetic acetone. Of course, you know who hates all of this is the Queen of England and England. They hate the Khazarians and hate the, what the Jewish people had done because they made them to sign the Belfort Declaration, and they took all the acetone and did not share anything. And actually, the British fought the war and had General Allenby did all the duty work. And then they signed the Belfort Declaration, giving the country over to the Jewish people. And they had no country at all, only a small part of land that didn't belong to them. They, they had conquered from John Hyrcanians. They had conquered from uh, what's it called the, uh, the Edomites in southern Israel. So they really tricked Great Britain and have tricked the world. And now the Khazarians have had gotten the British to sign the Belfort Declaration, giving them the, a nation in 1948. It is written in Psalms. 40, 49 and verse number 4 it says I will incline my ear to a parable I will open my dark sayings upon a harp wherefore I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my hills shall come past about For they that trust in their wealth and beast themselves and the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give ransom for him, for the redemption of their soul is precious and it, it ceases forever, that he should live forever and not see corruption. For he see the wise men die, and the fool, the brutish person, perish, and leave his wealth to others. There is, there is, uh, in, word, in other words, thoughts. It is their house, which shall be conceived forever, and a dwelling place to all generations. It's called their lands. It is not their own. It is not their land. It's not their names. Nevertheless, man being in honor, abideth not. He is like a beast that perish. This is their way and their folly. Yet the posterity approve their saying, Selah. Like sheep, they are led to the grave. Death shall feed on them, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And the beauty shall consume in the grave of their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. Through while he lives, he blesses his soul, and men shall praise thee. When thou dost dwell thyself, he shall go from generation to generation to his fathers, and they shall never see sight. Men, what is it honor and understand? Not is like the beast that perish to the nation of the people who have called themselves Jewish the tribe of Dan that you have sought after all these all these riches and you hid your identity but you left a good trail you left a lot of names to follow who you are the three rivers that the four rivers that empties into the great sea that named out the Dan. You left a lot of countries with your name on it, a lot of idols that you worship, including Diana, London, Derby, all these countries that you left with your name on it, your imprint on them. 
and this is just thing. All these names that begins with the letter D. Very interesting, Dan. But that's who you are, Dan, Jewish people. We know who you are. You are Danites, people that have betrayed your race and your people. Dan, you are a black man with a white face. That's all you are. And you hate your own people. You killed your own people, Dan. You hater, you murderer. You are a serpent, just like the Bible said you are. You are the serpent, like the word of God said that you are. Dan, you hate your own people. You hate your own race of people. You sold them into slavery for wealth. I hope it is worth it because your name is not written in Revelation chapter 7.